but it is wonderful when you see when they got it. You know, they look different. They feel different. Everything about them, their spirit is different. You yeah. know, yeah, yeah, it'd it be kind of like, like we be, at least for me, it'd be kind of like we was feeling. Yeah. That's how they be acting. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'll I, I be telling you guys, man, you, you ain't got to fake like you a motherfucking pimp, man. You could just know what a pimp know and be you. Yeah. 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 You know, learn some of the shit a pimp motherfucking know. The, the main mm -hmm. thing, the reason y'all like us so much. Is because we got that confidence down, and, and we ain't scared to do whatever the fuck we do anywhere. Anywhere, and we trying to show them how it's transferable, hey, right? And, and, and transferable. That's what, they, that's what they need to understand. Mm -hmm. It's transferable. I see you guys coming up in here. Come on in here. <laughs> that's right. Yes, sir. Yeah, well. <laughs> Before you even thank you, I'm gonna tell you now you're welcome. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, we gonna drop tonight. Hurry up in this joint. I see your son. Got my son up in here. I see your boy. Your son. Uh huh. Dre, you bullshit. Yeah, my son. He be up in here. You know. He be up in my classes and all that, you know. He, he need to be. <laughs> you know, he need to be. He got uh, high high expectations for that young fella. I know that's right. Yeah, high expectations. Yeah. Every time you act like you understand, you got higher expectations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They ain't gonna stay. They ain't gonna stay there, boy. <laughs> you feel me? You grow, my expectations grow. He, uh, he, uh, you know, he's so sharp, man. And, you know, but his thing, he, he has to ultimately understand because, you know, youngsters, they want to feel like, and I, and I could appreciate that because he want to feel like I'm, I want to do it all by myself. And I told him, you know, well, no man is an island, you know, that's something that comes up out of our community, the maverick spirit, you know, which is not good. I can do everything by myself. I don't need no man and all that comes. That is not something that comes up out of strength that comes up out of insecurities. Because if you look around the world and you see nations that are running shit, you never see them by themselves. They are collective. Right. So I'm yeah, trying to show him the advantage of collective power. Dre, you know what's going on with a lot of these dudes, though? Uh, they are being raised, told, being told the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. the, you know, the, I, I ain't saying every woman is like this. Right. But, but I know most women, they want to raise their sons to, like, be asexual. They don't, they don't want to raise him to not like women or, or prefer men. They just don't want want them to like like we used to want to look under the girl dress. Dudes today, little dudes, they mm -hmm. don't want to do that shit. Mm -hmm. You know, there's mm -hmm. something wrong with that shit to them. I'm yeah. just saying the way they raised, they not raised to go after what we was raised to go after. They don't have to do it the way we do it. Mm -hmm. They just gotta not deny that it should be done. Well, they got to have the information. See, like me. That's like what him, they didn't he, have, right. See, him, he's sharp. He got the information. But be, because of something inside of him, which is not a bad thing, right? No. It's not bad that I feel like I want to gain my own stripes. Oh, you going to gain your own stripes, but take this inheritance that you have. See, I took my father's the inheritance See that, right. that's see what you saying right there. That's that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. See, do, young dudes today, I ain't saying your boy because your boy got you, but I'm saying young dudes today with they raised by their moms and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't need no man to tell you how to be a man. You know, they say stuff like that. They, they, and they lean them wrong. <laughs> they dead wrong. And, and, and what I'm saying is, they they make the boy grow up way more sensitive to female stuff because right. they're way more right. sensitive 
to mom. Right, right. right. They, they they just right. into moms and they ain't gonna think of nothing. Blah blah blah. That's yeah. where the, that's where the man comes in. Yeah, otherwise, yeah, yeah. Uh, otherwise, man, look, you ain't got to look at it like that. You ain't. Yeah. We don't tell them fuck a bitch. We don't say that to our sons. Right, but, right. But we sure tell them, man, quit kissing that bro's butt. Right, 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 right. We we right. tell them that stuff. Mom's going to tell him, you got to be nice to the girls. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. different, man. Right, they, right. They don't right. have the, the, the young men today don't have the necessary information that was passed on from her older brother or whatever down to the, to the younger one mm-hmm. automatically in our days. Right. Now, if that's the case, you got to find somebody like you and, and pay you whatever to do what in, in our day, just being being 22, talking to a 14-year-old motherfucker. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. just automatically did it. Right, right. You you automatically told him how, what was man. And, Nigga, I know you're talking to them girls now, nah, man. You mm-hmm. know, whatever you say to them, but it's making them be dudes. See, my thing, the thing is this with my son right here, my son, because since I want to talk about him, you know, when we, teenager, I made it, uh, as he was going through those phases, you know, I made it him understand the importance of our relationship, right? Yeah. My relationship with you, your relationship with me has to be on a level of honesty and truth. That That's imperative, son. So I remember a situation happened one time. He was smoking some weed, right? He knew I didn't like him smoking weed. So I smelled it on him, right? And and I just asked him, uh, you smoking weed? And he said, yeah, dad. And I said, I gave him a hug. I said, I, I love you. I'm so proud of you. Because I'm not even talking about the smoking weed right now. I'm talking about the value of our relationship wasn't violated. We didn't allow anything to violate our relationship. And based upon that right there, I'm so proud of you beyond whatever this weed was. I'm glad the situation happened so that you know, the, the thing is, you know how much I'm opposed to it. And even though you know I was opposed to it, it was more important for you to be honest with your father. And for that, that's a man. I love you for that, boy. That's some dope. You see what I'm saying? That's some dope. Yeah, he, he he he. That's respect, man. Man, that's manhood and so. Yeah, you know. I already knew he was going to be all right. Trey, mm-hmm. This is what I'm talking about. They yeah. missing that your your boy didn't because you was there. But right. I'm saying the average dude his age didn't have nobody to give him that. That even though it's just a word or two correction, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's guidance and it make him see shit a whole bunch different. Yeah, you know, man and. And you didn't have to say, man, don't lie to me. You know, you I mean, you may have told him that in, in the past, but when it came down for him to lie or not, he stood up, he grabbed his nuts. Like yeah. he said, he won't he wanted to do it himself. Right, right. And that's the way you do it yourself <laughs> by being a man. That's right. That's the way you do it. That's the he, way you he do got it. That shit. Yeah, that's, that's the way you do man. it. Yeah. Hey, in his you guys got to understand the importance of what I'm saying. You youngsters need to realize not only Dre and I are are here, but you need to start listening to the other brothers. If, well, come to think of them, if they're under 40, they ain't really got no real game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if they're under 40, mm-hmm. you know, they kind of fucked up. They might have yeah. been at the end of it. But they don't really believe in themselves, and and, and and if you got gray hair, them young, <laughs> young cats think you Santa Claus. <laughs> right, 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 right. Hey, hey, but I tell them, man, your job in life is to get some goddamn gray hairs. Mm-hmm, I don't mm-hmm. care if you cover them up or not when you right. get them, but you gotta get them. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing gonna show you living, boy. Wow. You know, you, you, that. Really, you really, really, really got to get them. Please believe. <laughs> That's real. <laughs> so let me say to you guys, man, you know, um, somebody asked, why didn't I want my son to smoke weed? Well, in the game, there I know 
you know, people do what they do. But in the game, as far as I was concerned, my father never touched a drug till he was 40 years old. And so I grew up knowing that I didn't have to do it because I seen all he had accomplished and who he was. And when that crack era came in, it destroyed so many people in my family. It destroyed my aunts. It destroyed my uncles. It destroyed my dad. It destroyed all the people that I loved. And it gave me a hatred towards anything that destroyed people that I loved. Right. And so uh, my dad used to say when he would be talking to somebody that had an alcohol problem or some type of problem or crack problem, and they would tell him that they smoke in weed. My dad said, you can't do nothing because you're going to ultimately go back to your drug of choice. If you're doing something right, if you're doing something, you're going to go back to your drug of choice. Right. So the reason why I didn't want him to participate in anything, because all my life I've never had drink or smoke. I tried it. Right. I tried it. Uh, but I, there was nothing that could sustain me. It's not nothing I wanted to do. And I didn't want anything to lead into something. And in this game, I wanted to be sharp. I wanted to be on top of everything abroad was doing. And I didn't want it to be my mistake because I was high or I was drunk. I made a wrong move or whatever. I didn't want it ever to be my mistake. So my high was control. That was my high was control. To this day, my high is control. And whenever I'm out of control, I'm not feeling my most powerful self. I'm not feeling myself. And alcohol and drugs and all that kind of stuff alters me from who I am. So my high is control. And that's why I didn't want him to. Hey, 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 you guys. Now, let me tell you something. Two motherfuckers couldn't be as different as me and this man is. That's right. That's right. Uh, about that, I'm talking about I smoked weed. I took all kind of shit. And when it was time for me to quit, I quit. I ain't never been to a rehab. I I I ain't never been. I might have been hooked. I don't know. I had enough money to not know. But what I'm saying, when the time came for me to raise my daughter and, and, and you know make a choice, do I want to be high and all of those goddamn shit? Man, I was through with that shit. You know, and and I don't think it ever stopped me. But I do know that I might have missed something or or done something wrong because I was high. But to me, that that's life. For me, mm-hmm. you know, it, it ain't no real big thing. But but to a motherfucker that it is a big thing, how can I tell them that it ain't? I, yeah. I, I couldn't say that to you. I, I yeah. couldn't say I couldn't say that to motherfucking Sir Captain. Right, right, right. I, I couldn't say that to Pretty Tony out of Chicago, man, mm-hmm. rest in peace. Now one of them niggas got high. But they used to hang with niggas that got high, and they didn't never say nothing about it. But we used to all complex, nigga. When you gonna fuck with this shit, nigga? I don't need no motherfucking shit. I fuck with me. Say the same thing you say, Dan. Not they get high on control, but they get high on doing whatever they do. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know. So I mean, I man, you know, I, I I'm, I'm glad motherfuckers like you exist. Yeah, but you and, know and what you know, I could be doing. And my uh, you you know Gene Morgan. Yeah, you know, I know Gene, Gene Morgan. Yeah, so Gene, you know, uh, my nigga, man, you know, my nigga. And so there's a lot of dudes that have been very successful in the game both ways. You know, some niggas that indulged in alcohol and, and, and got high and, and some niggas that didn't. Right. But, uh, you know, I just it was something that I, I, I didn't need it. I, my high was control. I needed to be in control. I'm a control freak, man. I, I probably I probably wouldn't like you if you got high, goddammit. I, I wouldn't like you. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm so used like to, me. to the way you are and shit. Yeah. I probably would think, man, ain't that a piss? What's wrong with that nigga? Man, that, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, uh, and my son stopped getting high. You know what I'm saying? He, he And he came to that on his own, right? He knew how I felt about it, but he got into a situation. He felt like, man, I don't need this. This is getting in my way. And just like you, bud, he stopped immediately and never went back. You know what I'm saying? That's why I know got the boy got so much strength in him to do, you know, anything he want to do. He just can't get it. He can't let himself. He can't get his. He can't allow himself. My, my, let me say it like this. You know, I'm not into the Christianity stuff, even though when I was younger, I got I was into the church when I was 16. But there there was a pastor who used to say something that I love to this day. And he used to say, 
His name is Elder Green. He used to uh, pastor a church called Greater Revival over in Seattle, Washington. And he used to say, shake hands with your worst enemy, yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so I just don't want, you know, his worst enemy to get in the way of him. And that's always yourself, right? Yeah, it's always yourself, man. Ain't nobody more bigger than yourself. You got to conquer you. And that's the hardest thing in the world. When you go to Bud's class, y'all don't even know who you are. So you are your worst enemy is yourself. Bud teaches you guys, like I do, who the hell you are, yeah. right? So that you can Did I introduce him to some. I, this is what I tell him. I'm gonna introduce you to somebody you ain't seen in a very long time. You, the real you, you. you. So yeah. it's the same principle, right? So yeah, shake hand with your worst enemy. Yourself. So they, they they don't understand. What we really mean when we say that, Dre, right? because I'm saying there is not a time you look in the mirror and, and, and see anything but who you really are oh, at that moment. Mm. And, and, and I'm saying whatever it's about, you could be thinking about going to one of your friends wedding. And, you know, I don't care what you are thinking about. You never have to check yourself about trying to be something you ain't. Mm, mm. You way proud of who you are. I mm, mean, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So goddamn proud that, I mean, <laughs> we, we we Smokey Robinson, we the Temptations. You know, that's that's how we all thought. We yeah. thought, thought of ourselves as that let's big of a person. Let's deal with this. Let's deal with this, but. Okay. I had to, this one popped out at me. Let's deal with this. This is a guy named Cam. He said, if I take a class, I need to learn how to pimp, not find myself. Boy, we about to wear you out for that one. How, Dre, how can he pimp if he don't find, if he don't have himself? We try, he don't get it. He thought he said something powerful, didn't he? <laughs> he did. He said something that's going to blow the inside of his head up if he keeps trying to think that. Yeah, bro. You don't. Hey, do hey. you remember an American pimp that I said before you a pimp? You got to be a man. You got to be a man before you a pimp. First, so you done said if I take a class, I need to learn how to pimp, not find myself. You think niggas out there is pimping that don't know themselves? <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a big commitment. Come it's on, like, man. Hey, hey, it's like Shaq not knowing if he should commit to basketball or not. You feel me? And, and, and once he commit, it's like he going to change his mind. No, it ain't nothing like that. Bro was very wrong. Bro, you so list, bro. And I, we going I'm going to try to I'm going to try to I'm going to try to help you a little bit, man. <laughs> Let me say this to you, man. You said if I take the class, I want to know, learn how to pimp and not find myself. You don't understand how insulting that is to a man that's out there that's doing what he's doing. Because the first step, he got to know who he is. You think you can go pimp and not know who you are. If you don't know who you are, how the bra going to know who you are? See, how's he going to know who to pay? <laughs> see, let me tell you this. My dad used to always say, Mel Taylor, pimping is not what you do. Pimping is who you are, but you don't know who you are. So how you gonna pimp? You got them mixed up. You got you got them topsy turvy. You look into the pimping and reducing the man. You got to man. You got to elevate the man because you Dre, can never be no good pimp. Drake, Drake, this this is part of what I was talking about. He's part of 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 the lost generation. That probably was raised by a female. I ain't mad at his mama. She can't do no more than she could do. Yeah. She's, a, she's a woman. She gonna tell him what she think. But the right. thing is, you don't need no you don't need no man's advice about stuff. If you don't get a man's advice, you grow up thinking shit like this, fool. Exactly. 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 Bruh. Come on, man. You you was bold to put something like that. I'm glad I caught that. See, I can catch stuff like that, man. That's the crazy. You need to be right here where you are. But see, you got a maverick spirit inside of you because you don't need no man because you might have grow up and your mama. All you heard her say in the household is, I don't need no man. I don't need no man. And so man. you don't have no man around to see why you need one. 
Hey, and think of this, Dre. They eight years old, seven years old hearing this shit, and they know that they a boy, and they hearing their mama saying, man ain't shit, man ain't this. Mm -hmm. They don't even want to become a man. They, they, don't even they, want they, to. they like thinking about everything but being a man. See, that's how, why it's easy, man. That's why it's so easy nowadays for a young black man to pick up a pistol and kill somebody that look just like him. Because you ain't got no value of a man. Yeah. It's harder yeah. for you to point your pistol at a woman, but for another guy that looks like you, you don't even like a man because you've never seen why he's necessary in your household. So if you don't see why a man is necessary in your household, you're going to say stuff like this. Uh, if I take the class, uh, I want to learn how to pimp, not find myself. Do you see and how crazy that sounds? That's what you're going to be sounding like. Dre, he don't hear it. <laughs> if, if he could possibly hear it, he wouldn't have said it. No, he wouldn't have said it. He can't hear what you, he hear the words, but he ain't getting the power of what you saying. Man, man. It's power, well, in, help you. It's power in believing what we believe. Hey, man, we trying to help you before you go out there and get a bad decision, man. You you believe what we believe, not, not to be a pimp, but to be a man. First. Period. You, Look, be, you believe that you're going to stand up differently. Let me tell you guys this. Look, man, one of the biggest problems in our community is what other communities don't have a problem with. You see the Japanese, the honor and the respect they have for the men in their culture. Even the white people, white boys right now, they go to school to learn from their forefathers what they've been taught. So they go to these Ivy League educated schools with knowledge from their forefathers, knowledge from white men that were before them. You see it in every culture but the black culture. See, the black culture, you look at an older black man and you got disrespect for him because you was, you was raised by your mama, right? And you don't know the value of a man in your household because you ain't never seen a man do anything in your household. So I'm not mad at you, but I want to give you some information because you headed for shipwreck thinking like that, right? You headed for shipwreck thinking that way, right? I want you to understand the most, detrimental thing, the most detrimental thing in the world for our community is the emasculation of the black man. The emasculation of the black man, right? So that you young black boys will not value the information that's coming from what we've conquered, what we've failed at, what we've overcome. See, that is what you're supposed to have as an inheritance. You're supposed to get that from wherever Rosebud and I have failed or succeeded. And we pass that down to you so that that gives you a head start. You see all them white kids be having head start, them Italian kids, them Jewish kids be having head start. That's because they respect the men in their culture. Please believe what I'm telling you. And until you young men start expect respecting the men that got the information, you're going to be lost. You're going to be lost and you're going to have a bad decision. Plus, you got to put value on yourself. Because mm -hmm. once you start valuing yourself, you will start seeing you and what you could be. And you will even look at an older dude differently. Because yeah. you will see this dude probably got the same and much more value. And you yeah. weren't seeing it before. Man, there's so much you miss because of youth, if that's the case. But really and truly, because of bad information, you guys bad just get a lot of bad information. Cold-blooded, man. And, and, and I'm saying, I'm serious, Dre, this really happened. I met this broad house, and she got um, three kids, a boy and two girls. And the boy is the oldest, and he about seven. So the little girl is in there using the bathroom. And the boy wanted some in the bathroom. And the door was open, and he just went in there. I wow. said, you're you going to let, let your boy go in there? She said, ain't nothing wrong with that. Mm. What I'm saying, separation of the sexes mm. is important. You I'm saying, your value. I, I, I'm saying, how this boy going to you know, respect girls when he think he could walk in the bathroom and it ain't shit? Mm. That, it, it, she didn't understand that. 
She wants to argue me down, telling me I'm old fashioned. And uh, I say, okay, so I guess your boy can play with Barbie, huh? And she said, yeah. Wow. I, I left. I left, Dre. I mean, they I would have left too, bud. I they, have, they have such silly ass ways to raise boys. And then these boys, at one point, going to blossom into young men. And they're going to see girls. And it's going to be for the first time. Man. That's why they're going to be scared to death. If they would have grew up seeing them as girls, they would have knew at one point I'm a like one. You Because we would have told them. Man. Yeah, look, look, man, the one thing we can be happy about, bud, is that in my class, in your class, I know in my class, 90, probably 93, 94% of the participants are black males. I got a few black women, which are good, but I'm saying the churches ain't reaching or attracting black males, but we are, bud. Yeah. That's saying something, man. Listen, it, it, we reaching them because what we telling them they can identify with. Mm -hmm. They just haven't really been schooled on what we telling them. Right, it's like, right. It's like if, if you automatically good in math and you had no concept of this math uh, situation, and I said something about it, you probably wouldn't know the mechanics of it because you're good in math. But if you never thought you was good in math, you never focused on any math shit. This is something you don't know nothing about. So you really don't know it. That's how little boys are, man. They don't, real. they don't know shit about girls. They don't know shit about growing up a little boy. They don't know why a little boy supposed to get a fire truck and, and a little girl supposed to get a doll. They, they don't know why because they think they're both people. <laughs> they, they don't think one's a boy and one's a girl. They're both people. So they're trying to make them grow up asexual, mm -hmm. which in reality is not going to happen. But Dre, if you think back to the 60s, the biggest thing to motherfuckers was population control. Man. And think about promoting that gay activity. Yeah. I'm saying that's a, that's a good way to control the population. Except they wasn't prepared for the uh, gay couples adopting kids. <laughs> uh, so what I'm saying is they 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 can't they 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 don't know what to do as far as that go. Mm -hmm. But as far as the effect is having on our black sons, is the mother believes that she can raise a boy to be a man. Huh. And I, I got several partners that is, is single dads and they have daughters. And now one of them think they could raise her, their daughter to be a woman. Although mm -hmm. they know different things to point them in that direction. Right. But, but what I'm saying with my daughter, you know, started getting them monthlies. She get one time she asked me, Daddy, can you go get me? And I said, Girl, I will slap the shit out of you if you ask me that again. Because mm -hmm. what I'm saying is, if you don't know about it, that's what your aunts and uncles are for. So mm -hmm. you're supposed to talk to women about that. Right, now, right. If you need the shit, sure, ask me to take you to get it. Right. But don't ask me to get it. Right, I right. Ain't, I, I've been like that even with my hoes. I was like that. Mm -hmm. You know, don't mm -hmm. ask me to get no female shit. Right. And, 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 and I kept that. But my point is that my daughter... From that point on, never ask me again. Mm -hmm. Never mm -hmm. thought nothing about it. And we ain't never really said nothing to each other about it. So right. when you establish, well, when you establish points, I'm saying I'm establishing that dudes don't do that. Now, that's me thinking that. That don't have to be you. Because right. a lot of motherfuckers don't really think that. Right. But I'm just saying, I don't know. I, I had a negative about it. Yeah. Dudes going to get Cotexes and all that stuff. No, I ain't doing this shit. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't doing that. I ain't buying no eyelashes. You know, I ain't gonna go buy no wig. You know, go right. get me number 49 wig. I wish I would. <laughs> right. I, I give you a ride to go get it. 
right, right, right. You know, I'm like that, Drake. I can I be old fashioned it. like that. Yeah. You know, I, I, hey, I, I pull I pull a 70 year old card on. <laughs> yeah, ain't no question. Ain't no question. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I'm from the old school for real, goddamn. Yeah, yeah. My thing is this, man. Um, you know, there needs to be. Let me just say this. Let's just talk about a minute with what, what Bud was touching on with um, the homosexuality and things, you know. And uh, I cover this too in the class, but I'm gonna cover it with you guys right now. Uh, funny thing is, is Jimmy Starr called me several years ago, probably five, six years ago. And I think he was trying to be a pastor over a church in Frisco or whatever. And he called me. He said, Dre, I want to ask you a question, man. I said, OK, shoot, Jimmy. He said, yeah, the, the majority of the people in the congregation are homosexuals. And I don't really know how to how to talk to them. I said, I'm going to give you something to say to him. I said, I want you to say it verbatim. Don't, don't add nothing to it. He says, OK. I want you to say, you know, I would never say that um, a prostitute or a person that's involved in gangs, a drug dealer, somebody who's involved in homosexuality, what I would never say is that they don't love God. I would never say that. I would never, ever say that they don't love God because you know what? I believe that they do love God. I said, I said, now listen, Jimmy, here's what you got to say this at. He, I said, this is what you say. But I will say that they probably don't love God the way he requires to be loved. See, because the relationship between God and man is not predicated on how you want to love him. It's predicated on how he wants to be loved. Because if it's only predicated on how you want to love him, you could do anything you want to do. You never have to change because it's predicated. Well, I love God. I done killed this person. I love God. I done raped this person. I love God. Right. You never have to change if it predicated upon you loving God. I said, Jimmy, that's why you're saying I would never say somebody who was gay don't love God. Give them that. I'm sure you do love God. But you probably don't love him the way he requires to be loved. The predicate. Is based upon how he wants to be loved. It's like if I had a broad. And the broad say she loved me. But she go out every week. And go sleep with everybody in the club. But she loved me. I don't want that. Because I have a predicate on how I want to be loved. Well, that's how God is. Right? So that's how you can have that conversation with people who are in, into homosexuality. It ain't about you. I know you love them. I'm sure a lot of people love them. Right? But it's predicated on how he wants to be loved. Just like it's predicated on how I want to be loved. If a broad say... I love you, but the broad do everything backwards to show me that couldn't be the case because I told you what I require. So the relationship is predicated on how I want to be loved, not how you want to love me. Now that's bars right there. Now that's for real. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I, I go with that. Yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, that, it is predicated on how I want to be loved. Period. Not, not whether you can do it or how you can do it. Not your no, capability. No, I don't care nothing about that. I yeah. This is what I require. Yeah. Right? This is what I require. You can't come to me talking about you love me, but you're paying somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's what it is. It's all predicated upon how he wants to be loved and how it's a female. Right? Same difference. You could take the same thing. Right? A man said he love you, but it's all predicated on how you require, right? So hey, it's predicated on how God is predicated on him. It ain't it ain't how you want to love him. You ain't got you you can go do anything you want to do if that's the case. Then just go do anything you want to do, and let your excuse be, well, I love God. Okay, well you go ahead and think you see if that's gonna work. <laughs> you go see if that's gonna work. Yeah, I hope I hope that fixed you guys a little bit. Man. It, it, it might have went over the head, man. It is deep shit in, in, in the sentences you be using. Yeah, yeah. Well, they gonna have to they gonna have to replay it then to get it then, but that's what they gonna have to do. Ain't nothing wrong with that. That's why it's recorded. 
that's that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. You can so get yeah, this like, shit again and again. Again and again. So you guys got to get that stuff right, man. You know, it ain't no, you ain't mad at nobody. I ain't mad at nobody. People do what they want to do. Y'all think homosexuality is something new? It's been here in the Bible days. Biblical. It's been here forever. It ain't nothing new, right? So I'm you do what you want to do, right? But I'm I'm telling you, it's not what I'm enjoying. It's not what I'm involved in, <laughs> right? I don't enjoy seeing it. I don't enjoy none of that. But I'm not going to kill you. I'm not going to kill you. I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to do any of those things. As a matter of fact, when I was in the gang, my my some of my broads used to have some dudes. Uh, this guy who went to um, who was um, a, a waitress at one of the little uh, place we used to go eat at, right? And that was a friend of mine. You know why? Because I told him, you know what? I'm not mad at you doing what you do. You leaving more women for Dre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to get out the way. Yeah. Hey man. Yeah, you leaving more women for Dre, you know? Hey, I was real successful at, at, at coming up with girls who, who were gay, right? There was this one girl named Antoinette. She was a Costa Rican. She's from Costa Rica, right? But she was gay. And I liked her, right? And she was going to the strip club. This was in the 90s, right? And dudes didn't think I would come up with the broad, right? And the broad told me, you know, I like women. I said, shit, that's another thing me and you got in common. Shit. <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Man, I'm so hey, hey, now you know all of us had them cake bitches. Hey, I, I didn't tell her that, but I told her the same thing basically. Girl, yeah. you ain't said nothing. I like pussy too. Right. <laughs> we on the we on the same thing. <laughs> Shit. No, yeah. long as you and that bitch paying me, I'm yeah. telling. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Let's have a competition and see who can bring to see who can bring more home. That's what I used to say. We gonna have a competition. We gonna see who many can bring home to me. Yeah. Yeah, boy, this game is wonderful, baby. <laughs> no, as long as you keep it in proper perspective. Hey, got to keep it in proper perspective, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. Let me see some of these dudes. Uh, Jerry, why, why, are you, why your folks don't call in? Some of my folks? I don't, I don't mean know. your folks. I'm just saying these guys. Yeah, yeah, some of my, uh, some of my, uh, my some students. Some of these guys in, in the chat. Oh, I don't know. I mean, you know, they can they can call, they can come in anytime they want, you know. I I, I you know, that's their prerogative. Okay. But you know, but I'm gonna put, you know, they can have some things in the chat if they want to come in and share. I think a couple of them came in sometimes, you know. Some of them came in. <laughs> but you know, all right, but see, I want to see a couple of you guys catch. Y'all come up in here. <laughs> see, 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 see this cat right here. Prince Who's Charm that? Don. Yes, it's church to the game and everything in it. Let's see. Let me pull them up. What I'm uh -huh. saying, what I'm saying is Prince Charm Don. What is church? Just I want to know what it is. Dre, do you know what it is? Um, I think it's See, I don't want to say I don't want to say what I what what I I, I don't want to say what I think it is, you know, because I know it's some new term that Bishop started, you know. Well, to me, it, it, it's foul mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, I, I I would never say no shit like that. Right, right. That's why I want to know what it means. Well, let's we'll say what it means to him, family. What does that mean to you, man? Prince Charm Don, love one. He, what does that he, mean to you? He ain't, he ain't gonna say. He ain't oh, gonna he say. gonna say something because you know we ain't. I, we just want to get his opinion. Love one. Uh, what does that mean to you? Because that's yeah. kind of a new term for us. I know it's been around the last maybe decade or something. But what does that? What does that mean to you? Nah, Richard. We ain't talking about the religious. Everybody know the religious aspect love one no 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 what, what i'm saying is oh mr Rolling stone said church means truth 
Anyway. Is that what that means? Is that everybody's understanding of the word church when it's used, when it's in relation to the game, I guess? What is the, what is the, what is the, is that what everybody's terminology is? Church, you can't hate Bishop started. Church can't hate you. You can't hate what Bishop started. No, he said, church can't hate you. You can't, you can't hate. hate. You okay? If that's what it means, I can't say nothing about it. But I well, know. no, I mean, a, 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 a loved one. It ain't hating Bishop. It's just he don't agree with the term. You know, you know, Bishop is who Bishop is. I, I fuck with Bishop. I fuck with all the guys over there. I don't think he, you. You talking about King Sweets? Uh, yeah. King Sweet. He's not saying we hate them a uh, bishop. He's saying Bishop started church. Yeah, I know that. He give the acronym at first, and the acronym stands for can't hate you. You can't hate. And he oh, said Oh, that's what church means? Yeah. He said well, bishop. See, one started. person said church means truth. Another King Sweet said that that's what it means. So I it's confusing. Maybe I need to go ask Bishop what the, what it what it means when he say it. But I'm going to be honest with you. It's something that I never used before, right? It's something that I felt bordered too much on, you know, the other thing there, right? So I never used the term. It, to this day, I don't never use it. Even though I know people use the term, you know, I'm not hating on nobody that used the term. It's just something that I never use, you know, because that is was a new term. And I just felt like, you know, David's fat. That, yeah. It's it, 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 in my opinion, uh, a lot of squares always want to relate tents to preachers. And, uh, and and what I'm saying is I don't know if that's what it was, but that's why I didn't like possible. it. That's oh, why okay. I didn't like it because it, it was re like referring to the church when I don't, you know, like that. I really don't like, my, you know, being related to a preacher. I got you. I got you. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's fucked up to me. But right, right. I can't say what the church. It's a lot of little, but I guess a lot of people are saying a lot of different things. I'm seeing yeah. that. Yeah, but I guess it 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 means truth. It means uh, a to to salute, glasses up. It means to me that I agree with the essence of the game, you know. So I guess it has you know different little meanings. Yeah, words do matter. Somebody, real king said. But always teaches words matter. Words do matter. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tabernacle, you know. Don't hop. Don't hop Don't in, the, hop microwave. in the, microwave. the microwave if you ain't ready to be cooked. All right. <laughs> it's something Bishop said on a DVD, and they simply watched it and made it. Uh oh, made it made it seem to them pimpish. Well, you know, hey, man, um, there's things that I say, things that buds say. I say, you know, in my classes, give them back their shit. I say we the remnant. There's things that I say that my uh, the remnant says the same thing. So Bishop started church. You know, that's something that comes from him that he started, you know, and hey, it is what it is. Everybody ain't got to like everything. I'm just saying initially when I heard the term church several years ago, um, it was something that I wasn't going to say. Right. And even my, even Kenny Red, you know, he got into the church, I guess as a movement, whatever, but Hey man, it, it, it became fashionable. It became entertainment. And if it helps Bishop in any way, I'm for it, you know, Thank bless you. Bishop. If it helps Bishop and what he's doing in any way, then do your damn thing. Right. Whether it might have been not something I'd say it or not, you know, I don't know one time that I've ever said it before. You know, I say, OK, man, well, I was like, yeah, you kicking game or whatever. So if it means that it means that Bishop brought it up. Cool. That's his thing. And you the, way, the way it's commonly the way it's commonly used, though, it, it I, I would kind of accept truth or that's real. You know, uh -huh. um, church, church is a cosign of, of what's being being said. Probably so. Yeah, probably so. You know, so it is what it is, man. Hey, even even OG don't know shit. <laughs> we learn every day. 
Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, but yeah, but I'm gonna kick this ism. Y'all know that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna kick this ism. You know, so it might be a new term. New term for that bishop was trying to honor God, but it just got associated with the game. I got you. All right, I. We got it, y'all. Yeah, Appreciate we it. For that. We got it. That All right. Good. On to the next one. On to the next one. See, P Prince Prince Trump Don could have told us all that. I don't know why he didn't holler at us. I told you he wasn't going to say nothing, man. Man, we're trying to get the information. We just want to know what it means to him. Okay, we got it now. He didn't sprinkle us, but the, if it, the, the, the chat room did. We got it. I don't know where maybe Bud might know because it was before my time. Well, where did the term ism originate? I don't know. Because when I don't know something, I'm gonna be real. Ism is the practice of. There you go. Bud doesn't get the the, the terminology. Any ism. word, any word with the uh uh ology is the study of ism is the practice of. Mm-hmm. No, but where did it originate from is what they asked. I don't know where it originated from. The ism? It, it, yeah, he said, it, where did it, the word ism originate from? I it, said it was it before my time. I don't know which nigga was the first nigga to say it. But, yeah, it was before but, my time. But it it it, it originated from, from the people saying pimping is more than a job. It's me. Mm -hmm. What I do. I got this ism. And I don't know where it came from. The, Me neither. It was before my time. I don't know. I, I yeah. I guess it was before mine too. Yeah, I don't know. It's before my time. So, but I know. But I know I picked it, it up. You yeah, know. Yeah, I, I know that's what it means, though, because that's yeah. what we practice. This is. Yeah, I know what it means. I just didn't know where it came from. Yeah, that's a good one, though. That was a good yeah, question. That was. You know. Yeah. Whoever, I don't know. What they should have did is patent it. They would have been a multi-millionaire today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I patent, I patent this knocking season. I patent that whole word. It's knocking season. <laughs> My patent. So somebody say it's knocking season, they gotta pay me. I patent it. <laughs> there you go. You, you were. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yes, I did. I showed sure it. I showed sure patent it, man. When my song came out, I said I'm gonna patent this. It's knocking season. Yeah. yeah. Let me see. Somebody say you don't know what it means if you don't know where it comes from. All hey, right. Man, there's a, hey, how hey, many hey, words? Hey, you hey, 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 that's what I'm. I, I'm just gonna say. All right. Go ahead. Go he ahead. sleep too. He, yeah, Drake, he anything. He, he sleep too, like that other motherfucker. So he, you saying that all the words in the dictionary, I might know what it means, but I might not know where it originated from. So and what does that mean? mean? You don't know what it means if you don't know where it came from. Well, that, that doesn't even make any sense, bro. There's a whole bunch of words that we don't know where it came from, but we definitely know where it means. They don't know where Abba Dabba Q came from. <laughs> that came from me and Tay. Nigga, you feel what, me? You, what, what you doing, nigga? This Abba Dabba. Nigga, where, you, <laughs> where you going, nigga? Just spread some of this Abba Dabba, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we used to say, and Abba Dabba Q is the pimping. Abba, right. Dabba, Abba Dabba is the game. <laughs> Abba Dabba Q is the pimping. We used to kick that shit. Abadabba. Hey, when they was building 118, that three-way, me, yeah. me and that nigga used to drive 110 miles an hour on it because it was only about three miles long, and, and it started at, and came off the hill from his house. They hadn't connected it to the other freeway. You'd have to get off and get on the 405. But we'd be mm -hmm. driving fast as a motherfucker, uh, talking to each other out the window. Cause yeah. I, I learned that from Tay. <laughs> <laughs> Let Shit. me see what's that. Wisdom Finesse want me to say, Dre, can you tell the story about your dad when he was around some guys and one of them guys was bragging on his material possessions and your dad said, 
You only do that when you're not used to things. Yeah, my dad was telling me, but I'll tell you the story. But let me tell you the context, right? Because this is when he was teaching me about, you know, having class and things of that nature. One time he was telling me he was dealing with uh, Charlie from the Gap Band. That new guy was all getting high out there in the valley back in the day. I'm not besmirking Charlie's name because he tell his own story. But uh, back then, Charlie, they was at his house and he was showing everybody there the remote control to open up his 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 curtains. So he had the remote control. He said, everybody, look at this. And he pushed that remote and opened up his curtains. You know, that was back there in the early 80s. You know, that was something real fly, right? Real fly. Real fly, right? Back then, right? So, and then my dad would say to me, he said, there's some guys that be in the club, you know, they might have got a new Benz, right? And they talking to a girl, right? And they going to tell the girl, you know, hey, yeah, baby, you know, why don't you just come outside? We can go jump in my Benz outside and this, that, and the other. He said, don't ever do that. He said, don't ever do that. He said, but how you can deal with that if if you and the girl is interested and, and you tell her, you know, um, you know, it's my red car right outside. It's in Valet. Go over there. I'll be out there in a minute. Downplay that shit. Make yourself look bigger than that shit. The guy that's all talking about, yeah, let's go jump in my bins outside. He making the shit bigger than him. So hey, I'll, hey, hey, what what he, he what he doing is acting like the bins bought him. Exactly. See, see you exactly. know you bought the bins. The bins didn't no buy you. you. There ain't no car come up to you and say, hey, you want me? No, you, you say, I, I want the car and you go get it. That's why right. you downplay it because it ain't bigger than you. It ain't bigger than you. Yeah, man. Go Not only do you got that car, you got a big old house and a whole Period. bunch of jewels and about nine or ten pair of motherfucking gators. Period. A whole bunch of goddamn shit. Sharif, <laughs> uh, that's my loved one. Sharif say, okay, I'll put it up, Reef. Please ask Rosebud just how did he sell his nails to Revlon? I've been trying to figure that out since American <laughs> Up in 2000. Hey, hey, I, I would show you this, but they cut. But listen, <laughs> I'm telling you, Dre, you remember when we used to blow? Well, you didn't do it. but you know, I remember when y'all used to do it, yeah. The long <laughs> fingernail. Man, my fingernail, all 10 of them, was about three-fourths of an inch long. And, and back in the day, uh, Revline and some other fingernail people, they was doing real thick fake fingernails. Mm. Just thick as hell because they would get a, a, a long fingernail and then they would put some shit on it that make it fit on top of a fingernail. But the extended part of the nail would be real nail and the rest would be, I, I guess, what they ended up making the uh, the little fake ones out of now. You know, they would just paint it on and they would yeah. do a little thing and, and make, it, <laughs> make it sharp. Man, they was crazy. But I used to get I think 500 bucks for a whole set. Just wow. like they would buy human hair. Wow, wow, wow. Y you know they would buy human hair, right? Yeah, they still do. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, well, I'm mm -hmm. saying, man, people would grow their hair to grow their nails. The good part about my nails is they grew straight. Mm. You know, people's nails grow long and start curling under and shit. Mine would go straight out. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yes, sir. So, so you know, just like that, you know, them fingernails, you, you, the game, you, you run into so many different things that you don't even be thinking about. You just out riding. Networking. Yeah, and then the next thing you know, you pull up on something you see you like. Didn't even know you was going to see it. Mm. But, but the game was so good about it, <clears throat> you just buy it. Man. <laughs> you, Man. Just, you just buy it. You, Man. Don't even, you don't even trip. You don't even, you know, like they said, if you got to ask how much it costs, god damn, you can't afford it. Ain't no question. We, we used to make sure we asked how much it costs because if it didn't cost enough, we wasn't buying it. <laughs> 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 we was crazy like that, man. Hey, I remember when. I remember my daddy took me out for my uh, 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 junior high graduation and he took me to this place on, uh, it's not there anymore. It's, it's on Hollywood Boulevard. It's called the Dar, the Dar Maghrib. 
it, it was a Mediterranean, it was a Moroccan restaurant. And you go in there, the ceiling is open. It has all, all, they serve you seven straight courses. You know, they don't got no menus. Each certain day has got certain courses, no menus. And so you don't know how much it is. They tell you how much it is at the end. And I just thought it was so fly. And I knew when I got older, I was going to take, and I sure enough took a broad there, boy. Ooh, I, and <clears throat> they, um, they got the belly dancers who, Man, I remember that joint on Hollywood. You remember the Dharma Grib in Hollywood? Yeah, yeah, it was by the uh, theater, right? It, it was, yeah, down from there a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's down from the theater. Yeah, hey, yeah, hey, that hey, was hey, high I, pop, it, boy. It, 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 Moroccan, yeah, the Indian dancers. And, yeah, 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 I remember yeah. that, man. Yeah, man. Boy, that was my plot spot. I take a broad there. I'm a blower of mine, man. I'm talking about that was my joint. My dad laced me that when I was in junior high school, man. And I sure got an opportunity to take a broad there and knock the socks off too, boy. <laughs> you can't, you, when you go there, when you go into the Moroccan restaurant, uh, you can only eat with one hand. I'm giving you guys some game. You can only eat with one hand because the other hand you're supposed to use to put the money, you know, uh, the tip inside of the Moroccan dancer. You only eat with one hand. They serve seven courses, no menus, right? No price. So when you go up into a Moroccan restaurant like that, understand and act like you've been there before because your boy Drake giving you some game, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> hey, <clears throat> people know this, man, but let me tell this story. I remember BG, <clears throat> Baby Grand. You know, I've, I've been messing with Baby Grand uh, mm -hmm. recently. We've been kicking it. I went to Vegas. We kicked it and stuff. And uh, after the fight, <clears throat> they all came over to my timeshare and uh, we all had a great time. About 20 dudes was over at the timeshare after the fight. Or, or, or no, this was after, when was this? This was after Sinfo's um, home going. So anyway, we all there kicking and everything. But I, I remember when BG had, this was in Hawaii, he had a broad named Asia. Anything that ain't bolting down, she's picking up. And she had the broad Vogue. And I was like, Vogue was so damn fine to me, man. Just she looked Brazilian. She was just fine. And boy, that boy was having so much money. I was like, boy, I'm gonna get that bra one day. I'm gonna have that bra. <clears throat> so this had to be a couple years later. The bra's over in um <clears throat> in the bay in Frisco. And uh she liked my bra, right? She liked the way my bra get down and everything. My little Hawaiian bra, and my little Hawaiian bra start working with her. And I told my Hawaiian bra, slip up underneath this bra and learn everything you can. This bra is a premier thief in this country. You need to learn all the game you can, right? So I'm not telling her nothing but just to focus on her. So <clears throat> as they kicking it for a while, you know, she gets interested about me because my bra was so fly. So she interested about, you know, who your man is. So I tell her, tell her to come over to the spot. I had to, I had a little, uh, uh, I had the condo. Uh, uh, the Rencon by the Rencon Towers, right over there by the Bay Bridge. So I brought her over. Now watch this, guys. Now be careful. I'm gonna give you some game, right? <laughs> Broad came over. I didn't ask the bra for no money and for no nothing. I just wanted to talk to the broad. I didn't want to. I'm not gonna put nothing on it at all because I already know if she's asking already, right? This is an interview. Both of us is having an interview. Right. So I don't even say too much. I just say, listen, I tell you what. How about tomorrow we go out for dinner or something? Right. And we'll have more of a conversation to be me and you. We go out to dinner. So she says, OK. OK. So I get up and I go to her little hotel. I pick her up. <laughs> she say <coughs> she want to go get an outfit. So I take her to go get a little outfit at Cal Shea. So I'm driving after she get the outfit and I'm driving and I'm in Frisco and I'm on the freeway and I'm headed towards Oakland and I'm just driving. And so I'm driving so far out. She asked me, where are we going? I said, I told you we're going to dinner. So I'm driving. She don't say nothing. So I drive to the airport. So we go to the airport and she say, where are we going? I said, we're going to dinner, but we're going to dinner in L.A. And we'll be back the same evening. Right. So we get on the plane, you know, we go to dinner in L.A. I got the I got the limo waiting when we get off. Right. And we go to the little 
uh, uh, we go to the little Italian restaurant, right? Then we go back to the hotel, and the broad just broke herself. She says, I ain't never had nobody do nothing like this for me. Because you guys got to understand that in this game, a nigga is a romantic too, man. Yeah. Don't think that it's just all grime. Nigga got to have some polish about him. Got, got to make him see what she waiting for. What, you, the what, broad what is what a polished she, broad. She ain't she, just no average broad. The broad name is ringing like pimps out there because she's a premier thief. She done made niggas rich. This is a bad broad. And I'm about to have the broad, but I'm about to let the broad know that I'm a motherfucker around here. Right? So when the when I went through all that, the broad just, just broke herself. She's like, man, I've never had nobody do anything like that for me at all. Right? So I had the broad, right? She's a broad that got me the first platinum roly. Nobody even knew what a pra platinum Rolex was. This had to be 95. I was the first one with a platinum Rolex. She got it from a, a, a Chinese boy that came up out of China, right? The platinum Rolex. I had the platinum Rolex. Niggas was like, what's that, man? Niggas wearing gold then. They wouldn't even mess with platinum. I said, this is the platinum Rolex. Cost 80000 You feel me? So I had this broad, man, and then the story went everywhere. So my nigga Success called me. Success, man. He success, man. That's the coldest move, man. He said, I don't know what I'm going to have to do. Take the bitch to Japan or something now if I try to come up with the bitch. Now niggas know, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Niggas make big old moves, man. You got to be polished. You can't, but you, you got to be polished, man. You got to have some class, some sophistication about you, man. It ain't all the raunchy shit, especially when you had a premier broad. Especially now, you've had a nothing old broad who ain't never had nothing, they never seen nothing before. Man, you probably can take that broad to a fast food restaurant if that, you know. But when the broad done been places and got big money, right? I'm trying to let the broad know you choosing the real one. Ain't no pressure, I ain't got no desperation. I know how bad you are, bitch, but I ain't gonna say nothing about it. you gonna understand the blessing of being with me, broad. you gonna understand that. So, I had to put that move down. You, you, you had to let that bitch know that you know how to have that bitch. Please yeah. believe. Hey, you know, bitch, you ain't having me. Man, please believe, you know? And that story is a story out there to this day, right? So I had I learned that stuff because my dad, man, I be all... My dad used to tell me that... Um, what's his name? What's his name? Um, he was the richest man in the world. Uh, Getty. J. Paul hey, Getty. Paul Getty. And he, they, they was having a conversation with him. And he was like, I wasn't even trying to be the richest man in the world. I was just trying to outdo my dad. And me, I was just trying to outdo Mel Taylor. Because Mel Taylor would tell me shit like, you know, he'd tell me one time, you know, he had a bride that he liked. And he sent the bride roses. I said, you sent her a dozen roses, dad? He says, no. I sent her one rose, nigga. <laughs> I said, Dad, you a motherfucker, man. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I just sent her a dozen. No, no, no. It's too typical. He said, I just sent her one rose. <laughs> I said, Dad, ooh, you so... So he kept... He was doing so much big stuff, man. I'm saying, man, I'm trying to outdo my dad, man. I wasn't thinking about no other niggas, man. <laughs> yeah. I never knew that, Dre. <laughs> Man, no question. Hey, 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 you you went so hard because you was trying to do outdo Mel. I'm huh? trying to outdo Mel Taylor. The niggas don't even know. I wasn't even thinking about no niggas out there. I'm out trying to do my dad, man. Shit, man. I'm, I told you my dad when he knocked the uh, Beach Boy, the drummer. He, he knocked the bra. He knocked the boy, uh, the uh, uh, the drummer's wife, and she came over. He had the house in Hollywood Hills. Niggas wasn't having houses in Hollywood Hills. I was over there. I lived there. I know what it felt like. I know how I felt in it. And he said the broad came over. And the broad was so amazed. And he was like, uh, what do you, she said, what do you do? He said he had a smoking robe on. He said everything and nothing. I said, I'm going to say that one day. I have to say it. I got to have my turn. <laughs> 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 I gotta do it, man. I'm always trying to outdo my dad, man. That's why I was going so hard, especially when he gave me the story about John Paul Getty. He was like, John Paul Getty said, I wasn't trying to be the richest man in the world. I was just trying to outdo my dad. 
<laughs> and that's what the problem. Some of you niggas ain't never had a father to try to outdo. Some of you ain't had a father that have lived something spectacular in front of you for you can have a roadmap so that you can know what you could do and what you could be. I was able to see it. I was a young boy seeing what a nigga could have in this game. I saw the class. I saw the sophistication. I saw it. I saw him send 14, 15 broads around the country to Juneau, Alaska, to Paradise Island. I saw it. I was like, Dad, man, you sent him? He said, man, if you can trust a broad around the corner, you can trust her around the world. <laughs> I'm trying to outdo Mel Taylor, man. <laughs> <laughs> True story, man. Hey, because hey, hey, because the nigga ain't got to be there, you know. Man, once once you, once you have a every night, you ain't there. Man, the by herself getting that money coming in on her own, nigga doing what he doing, whatever it is, and the show ain't on the track unless you putting in work. Hey, ain't no question. Hey, uh, somebody said Dre, what made Mel Taylor's mouthpiece so cold? Because he was trying to outdo Joe Langford. <laughs> 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 ah, do you see when Tay and, and Rosebud be talking? They out trying to do each other. You guys don't understand that. <laughs> oh man, I what the motherfucker? I can't think of this uh black ass Joe, uh not Joe Langford, but uh, God damn it. But but anyway, man, I was trying to think of this nigga, man. Mouthpiece was cold as cold as a motherfucker. I know Tay. I know me. We, God, I can't think of his name, his last name, Joe. Uh, Cato? No, 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 not, not Joe Cato. Huh. Uh, the, Joe, he was short and black. And, God damn it. I, if I, I can't think of But anyway, huh. he, this nigga had conversation. Yeah. Delano, Hollywood Delano had conversation. Man, Hollywood Hots and, and, and Maurice Snyder. All them motherfuckers was just, you know what I'm saying? It, yeah. it, it just came out beautiful as they was talking. Man. Like like poetry. Yeah. Man. Hollywood Gene, too, all them niggas, you know, but Gene. Yeah. You know right? Mel Salisbury? Oh, that's Mel Yeah, Mel I know Mel Salisbury. Salisbury. You know Mel Salisbury? Yeah. And Roscoe, you know Roscoe? I, I know Roscoe, well... Old man Roscoe, older Roscoe. You know Roscoe. Yeah, yeah I know Roscoe. Roscoe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that's why I said well, because this nigga I'm talking about, he was old when I was young. Yeah, that's Roscoe. So that was all my crew right there. All them was people I was up around all the time. So hmm. I got it honest for real. Doing some real niggas, boy. I'm talking about boy, especially Woo! Joe Langford. Joe Langford. <laughs> boy, I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> Real that smoke pretty smoke. little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, that oh. it was too cold. Hey, y'all don't know, man. The most colorful cats in the world was in this game, man. Then you guys be thinking how me and Rosebud be so down because there is a litany of witnesses of giants in this game that's looking down at us, and we be damn near. We will not compromise. We will not, man. Mm -hmm. Ain't no way in the world when them folks is looking not at us, bro. Y'all don't know. It's, it's too many motherfuckers looking down on us. Too many, man. We ain't not about to violate this shit, man. It ain't gonna happen. Y'all don't get it, man. We will not do it, man. Hey, for nothing in the world. Shit. If we do, we ain't gonna get to be at the table there. We ain't gonna be at the table, partner. It ain't gonna happen. Please believe. Got too many premier guys and most some of the most prolific, beautiful people in the world, man. The greatest hey, hey, mind, the greatest Dre, thinkers, We worked man. hard for our seat at the table. Man, please believe. That's why we have... See, we talking about these great men with admiration and respect. See, youngsters, they, you guys lose that. You see how we can talk about it and it makes us feel good when we talk about how awesome these brothers were, these men that we looked up to, that we admired. It's something about that when a man can look at another man, a black man, and say, man, I want to be, I want to take that about him right there. I want to take that to be a part of mine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see this over here. I want that. I want that. I'm going to take that to be a part of mine. Hey, 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 hey. see that Rolls Royce and say, I know I can do it. Man, because you I see I know it. I can motherfucking do it. That motherfucker got it. I know I can get it. Hey, man. Hey, all that shit, jewels, the bitches, the cars. 
everything that we get is because we was chasing it because we seen it at one time. Seen it with our own eyes, man. With our own fucking eyes. We, we seen, seen it, the motherfucker walking and then a month or two later that nigga got a new car. And not only did we see the the things, the financial things, we seen how the men stood. We seen how they stood underneath pressures and how they pimped underneath pressure where a broad is trying to challenge them and they never compromised and they kept pimping through it. They kept the game through it too many times, man. No you punk. You not be no sucker, man. You can't no, be. You no be. punk in a nigga. No. Period. strong, standing up. Might be with some, a broad might have been with him for 10 years and the nigga stay strong. Stay strong. Don't bow whatsoever. My dad, man, I got to put another story, man. My dad, this is towards his, you know, the end of his life. There was a woman who I liked. Her name was Evelyn. And I called her Mama Evelyn. And I liked Evelyn because the way she took care of my father, everything was always taken care of, right? She cooked for him. She had everything clean. She, so I like that, right? But Evelyn did something one time and she lied to my dad. She had been with him for a while because she know she lied to him about something, Right? And my dad broke it off right then and there. And he, this is his word he would use. You must not know who the mother, you must not know who the fuck I am. I'm male motherfucking Taylor. And bitch, you can't never show up like that to me. And cut it off right then. And, the, and I'm calling him dad. Dad. The broad taking care of all your business. Uh, making sure everything is straight in your household. Making sure everything is comfortable. My dad said, don't shit don't, that shit don't mean nothing to me, son. The bit, that don't shit don't mean nothing to me. Right? And as much as I was concerned about my father because I wanted, I liked the fact that she took care of him the way she did. The man bowed his back and died that way and didn't give a fuck about it and went hard. I don't give a fuck. All the way to the end. I know. I, I, I can testify. Up a mile high. I can testify. The nigga went all the way to the end. And didn't bow one bit. And died just like that. That shit don't mean nothing to me, son. Bitch can't show up like that to me. I said, she taking care of the dishes. He, he said the bitch, he said the dishes can can pile up a mile high, son. <laughs> okay, <dad. laughs> hey, 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 he had, hey, hey, male had principles, he had boundaries, hey, he had man, everything man. it take to make a great man. You, man, you know, all of this stuff, off, nothing was more important than what he believed. Nothing. Mm -hmm. And you think, niggas, you think I'm a I done seen my dad and great men like him lit his shit thoroughly and purely. And I'm a violated in any kind of goddamn way. It'll never happen. Hey, hey, Mel, Mel was, I, I had to think I, I got real big to do this, but Mel was the kind of, you, you saying shit, making me see he was the kind of nigga that let a bitch know. My worst punishment for you is you can't be with me. Period. <laughs> Period. Period. I ain't finna put my hands on you. I ain't finna raise my voice at you. Get your shit and get on. You can't fuck with me. You violate one of Mel's principle. It's that's done. what happened. It's done, man. It's done. Listen, I, I remember going. I'm in L.A. now, though, this time. But I'm going to 24th Street Elementary School in Los Angeles. This is in, 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 in L.A., right? And they used to have back then. I'm showing my age now, y'all. They used to have the uh, shoe shine. They used to have the shoe shine um, places on corners where in LA, the shoe shine man would be over there, right? And I'm walking, going to school, and the shoe shine man, he see me and he say, You Mel Taylor's son. And he telling me all these things. And as I'm growing up, places, when my dad wasn't even around, places I was going, I would hear all the stories about my father. All these stories, people would talk about what my father did, how he, what he meant to them, and all this kind of shit. And I'm like, man, he was the greatest person. Ever. So I had pressure on me. So I understand my son. I understand him because I had pressure because he was such a man of character. The man was beautiful. He was a man of character. He wasn't going to lie. He wasn't going to be deceitful. He was about manhood. He was intelligent. He was articulate. He was well read. And I had to choose the field. And all my life, I'm just trying to outdo my father. So to you, son, 
Don't let that be something that drives you away. Make that be something that motivates you like it motivated me, son. Like it motivated me. That's your advantage. My, when I got into the game, and I'm not telling you, I'm just saying, when I got into the game, my father told me it's going to be easy for you to be the biggest guy in the game. In your time, it's going to be easy for you. He's seen what I didn't even see. But he knew what he put inside of me, just like I know what I put inside of you, son. Just like I know. But I applied what my father told me to the T. I seen it with my own eyes so I know it works. So why would I have to go try anything else? I don't need to change the plan. The plan is sure. And it works. And I applied it and it worked for me too. And it's going to work for you. You know, it's going to work. It's for already you. working. You feel me? Yeah. Mel Taylor, man. I represent him every day of my goddamn life. That's why I talk about what he's taught me. That's why when you hear me conversating all these years, I said, my father taught me this. My father, you see the admiration and respect for the black man? You guys got to have somebody that's a man that you have the same type of admiration for. And that's the only way the black man is going to be saved in this country. Man, I got the same goddamn, although my daddy wasn't no slick nigga. He just was a motherfucker that just thought if you got any education and you have any gumption about you, it ain't nothing you can't do. Mm -hmm. My dad used to tell me, you know, God ain't gonna let you think of nothing you can't do. And the only thing you can't do is the thing you haven't thought of. That's my my dad was a motherfucker to me. Hey, 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 they, they asked me to ask you this. Ask Robot how he felt about Joe Cato and how did he view his ways. Joe Cato um, was one of the two niggas that I heard about before I came to Hollywood that was monsters. The other one was Shantae. And um, I kept telling Delano I wanted to meet him. He said, man, you don't want to meet them niggas, man. Them niggas will take your bitch. You know, I, I said, man, I, if, anybody, if anybody take I want the, the professional takers to take them. I don't, I don't want them little punk motherfuckers to get to me. Right. So, so when I get to Hollywood, the first motherfucker I see is Joe Cato. Wow. Like, he he rolling in his 64 Rolls Royce. Black and gold. Fly mm -hmm. as a motherfucker. And uh, then he, he, he like a week or so later, the motherfucker bought a corniche, <laughs> drop top rose. Mm. He, he riding in the drop top rose, and and no no this is a couple of months later, because mm -hmm. because by now I'm I'm rolling I'm getting some money and I'm saying I told that nigga he say, uh, <laughs> I told that nigga I'm gonna get me a Rolls Royce man, and he say hey Rolls but a lot of people be dreaming. <laughs> 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 he said that. And I, I went crazy. Oh, I want to get me a Rolls Royce. I got that motherfucker. And I see Joe Cato in his corniche. And I pull up beside him. And I said, I told you I was going to get this motherfucker, man. And the nigga got the pink slip. And I showed it to him. And he said, go ahead on, bro. The next day, he went and bought a silver raft. Damn. He 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 fucking traded in his sixty four and bought a silver wrap. Uh, silver shadow is what I had. The silver wrap was extra six inches longer, mm. <laughs> and he had the drop top row. Oh, he's clowning! Hey, hey, man, I love that nigga, man. You know, I couldn't fuck with him be because he wanted you to be a, a yes man to him. Right, right. You know, all the niggas that fuck with him would go get him drinks and all this old shit. Right. Man, I ain't finna do no shit like that, man. He said, you, because he, he called me, to, he said, Rosebud. He had sent uh, the, the, hat, the hair guy, James, out to get me. And I said, man, that nigga sent you out here to get me? And he said, yeah. I said, tell that nigga if you want to holler at me, bring his ass out here. The nigga, <laughs> the nigga came to the door and said, what, you got a complex or something? I said, hell yeah, if you think I'm going to be a yes man for you, nigga. That's right. <laughs> oh, he hey. got to respect that. Hey, and let me tell you, the nigga respected me from then on. Oh, ain't no goddamn question about it. From then on. And, and me and the nigga, we wasn't really 
partners like that. Right. We had respect for each other. Yeah. Because I ain't finna go do that shit for you. That's right. That's right. <laughs> shit. I, I'm I'm making my own name. There ain't no goddamn question about it. Yeah, man. And it was it, man. I love that goddamn Hollywood, man. At that Ooh, time, that boy. At, at that time, man. Wicked cricket. Man, all them niggas, man. Big Bruce. All them niggas. They th these niggas. Wicked cricket Bruce. And uh God, who is that other nigga? They all had the same year white Fleetwoods, the same year white fucking Rolls Royces, and they had a couple other cars that they fucked around in. Mm. But all, all three of them had the same kind of cars, and them niggas was rolling like a motherfucker. Oh, Chris said the reason he asked, because many have said, he had crazy tactics to obtain a bribe. Joe Cato? Yeah, that's what Chris Davis said. No, that's not. He said, the cool. reason I asked is because no, no. he had crazy tactics to obtain Joe Cato, a bribe. Joe Cato, I, I've counted 14 of his hoes on the goddamn mm -hmm. track. This nigga had uh, two mansions across the street from each other in the Hollywood Hills. The yep. Rawls lived in one and he lived yeah, in one. Yeah. And, and, and what I'm saying is when it was time to catch, it, it wasn't his tactics that was bad. It was that he was the real cut your head pimp. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you get a bitch, he going to say, yeah, nigga, bring her on up here, man. You could spend the night or blah, blah, blah. When he get up there, all he going to do is high side, and the bitch ain't going to want to leave. Because right. <laughs> the nigga that's up, up in his house, pretty Tony, you know, all them other niggas, they ain't got no cars. Right, right. <laughs> you know, so they fucking with Joe because Joe a big old motherfucker. But Man. Joe, every time they got a bitch, Joe got the bitch. Mm, mm -hmm. it, it, but ain't that what he supposed to do? Hey, hey, that's this game, baby. That's this game, man. You that's can't be game. fucking with me thinking I'm gonna give you some goddamn slack. Man, man. No, I don't. I didn't. I didn't really mess with uh, Gangsta Brown like that. I don't have any Gangsta Brown stories. I really didn't know him like that. You know, we we knew each other in passing, but I don't know Gangsta Brown. I didn't know him as far as pimping with him. <laughs> Most of them Bay Area niggas. Yeah. They, I, I ain't talking about they pimping, but they, they didn't like me because I, I went to L.A. Right. And, and uh, one day these L.A. niggas came and, and, and they was high siding on them niggas. And all them Oakland niggas, man, they want to fight like a motherfucker, man. And, and, and I'm finna be with the Oakland niggas. And I said, well, what them niggas do? Because they was across the street. Yeah. They was parked. They was styling like a motherfucker fly, Hollywood style. Right. And and, and uh, I said, well, what they do? And them niggas said nothing. I said, well, what you guys mad at? <laughs> and, and, and them niggas say, man, look at them niggas over there. Man, them niggas pimps. And yeah. I went over there and kicked it with them. And, and I didn't even know that I, that's what I should have did. Right, right. I'm just a nigga that, man, I ain't going to be mad at no niggas that's they fly. Because they fly. Yeah. I've been over there, man, and them niggas kicking it with me and shit. And the next thing I know, I'm up in Hollywood, and I hear all these niggas in Oakland saying, I'm a punk. I'm this. I'm that. You know? <laughs> well, when them niggas came up to Hollywood, I had blossomed into Rosebud. <laughs> all them niggas was like, Jocking the nigga, cause I'm double R and I'm seven deep. Two of my bitches got brand new vets and shit. Man, I'm living my life. Ain't no but question. Joe Cato always was ten steps ahead. Heaven, man. Always, Richard. Richard, why you come on here, bro? Why you be on here all the time, man? Y'all was pimping them kids' mamas. Why not make sure their children was good? Did the government make sure their children was good, nigga? Hey, hey, but wait. Did the wait. country make sure they could? Why is you on here with, bro? Dre, let me ask you this. I just don't think you had a bitch that had a kid that you didn't take care of. Man, all the time. But I'm not about to explain to him. He's a square. No, no. What I'm, what I'm saying is this motherfucker is stupid to ask that. Because I, I ain't kid. never had no bitch that had a kid that I didn't take care of. That goes without saying, man. He don't get it. But Richard, man, why is you on here when this is all you be talking about, bro? 
Because he's a hater, man. If you don't want to be on here, I will remove you. I don't want to. But if you got issues about however we we talking about a life that we lived, you know, we didn't go kill nobody. We wouldn't gang banging. We was pimping. We wouldn't selling drugs. We was pimping. Hey, 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 the, bi hey the bitch can leave if she want to. Any goddamn time she want to. Shit. Ain't nobody nobody out here, uh, yeah. What are you talking about? You think them broads right now without a pimp that's out there doing uh, uh, strip clubs and all kind of stuff? They ain't got no pimps. They out there doing it because they trying to hustle, get themselves through school, get them some money or whatever. This shit was here before I was born. It was the oldest profession in the world. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to say because I done seen you in this chat so much. And I'm saying if this is something that you are opposed to, then, bro, why is you here? And like I said, I'll give you an opportunity, bro. You feel me? I'll Check give it. you an opportunity. Check it, Dre. He's here because the science we drop is undeniable. Mm -hmm. But he, he cannot be himself without trying to poke a hole in it. Yeah, so but I'm just saying to him, man, look, bro, bro, I tell my story, right, because I lived it. That's my testimony. I lived that. I have a right to speak about what I lived, what I faced, what I overcame, what I failed at, and I have a right to share that with some people in the hopes that they could take from my information to better their life, right? If you're a Christian, you know the scripture says they overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. So if I can share my testimony, I'll, albeit it might not be the best for everybody, but that's what I came through. My mama was a hoe. God chose that hoe womb for me to come up out of. So now I have a relationship with hoes that you will never understand. I don't look at them like you. They ain't the bad person to me to me because God made sure I was born from one. So I wouldn't have that kind of outlook. Nigga. I have it. I wasn't born from one. I had the same outlook. We the same nigga, Drake. You feel cause, me? We, Cause we got it. Yeah. We ain't scared to be real. Yeah, that square ass shit. Nigga, I'm gonna give you another opportunity. Nigga, take that shit on the Christian station. Nigga, we talking about real life over here. Nigga, that's why Christians can't reach black men today. Nigga. Hey, hey, hey. He, he do be here and how many brothers called in here testifying for us. Yeah, for real. Nigga with that old green ass shit, man. Tired of all them religious ass. So that's why I teach my people that Christianity is the worst shit in the world for the black man. Do you know that they got a black slave Bible that they gave to our people and took out all the shit except how to be servant, servants and servitude to white people? That black Bible, that black slave Bible is right now in the African American Museum right there in D.C. Nigga, that's what them people done did. I don't teach none of the people that's in the remnant class about that Christian shit. No, I, tell, I teach them about real life. Real life. And it hasn't been that for us. Come on with that shit. Hey, well, Dre, that's how it's been for us. <laughs> you feel me? Hey, we fortunate enough to actually have been through real life shit that we had yeah. to come through. And my Period. son said, yeah. He's an example. He also said his sister graduated from UCLA. My mm -hmm. daughter, my son graduated from Yale. Nigga, we are the example, like my boy said. <laughs> Hell you talking about, boy? <laughs> Nigga? Uh, hey, man, I'm looking up that black Bible, man. Cold thing, that slave Bible. What is called a slave back black Bible? The slave Bible, yeah, for black people. Remember I sent you the picture. Yeah, I do, but I didn't look it up. I'm looking it oh, up. Oh, okay. Slave Bible from the 1800s. Cold oh, thing. The key passages that, well, they, they didn't say. But it shows saying what you just said. It omitted. It took the shit out. It took it passages out that people. was key. Yeah. Man, That's I what they did. And what they still doing to your indoctrinated ass, socialized ass with that green ass shit. Here, nigga, that unchanged laws, that unconquered white supremacy, nigga, that had the president of the United States call me, that submitted a whole state, that fought for a brother and fought for all brothers that lead this whole country in police accountability, and God chose an ex-pimp to do it, nigga. Who you know doing that? 
Go into them Christian people. Fuck you talking about around here. And I'm going to keep this thing R-E-A-L, nigga, all the time. I told God I was going to work with my mouth, but you got me cussing around here. <laughs> <laughs> you know you know how we get when we get excited, man. Yeah. <laughs> Green ass shit. Yeah. I'm talking to real niggas out the street, real men. People that want the truth, want the information. People that's hungry, that want something real. They done seen so much fake in the country. Hey, they white they around the mouth real. of Silver Wolf. They, they hungry as Al Joseph. God you damn feel it. me? They want yeah. this, buddy. They want it. You they, feel they, me? They, they, they want it. They do. And we giving it to them. Please believe. Yeah. Anyway, back to this game, baby. <laughs> yeah. Back to this game. Hey, what they don't really, you know, realize, or, or maybe they do, I don't know. Maybe it's just taking a little bit to uh, really clear, be clear to them. But see, as, as black men, you, 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 you got to really respect the goddamn pimp. Yeah. Because this nigga, regardless, in his jeans with no shoes, get a bitch and whatever he became is because Peckerwood said he couldn't do it. And, and that's when it first started. And mm -hmm. what I'm saying is, you know, niggas doing what they can do because they want to do it. And yeah. then after it get to where we at, you got to do it if, if you're really about this shit. Yeah. You, you can't be no nigga that got a whole bunch of girlfriends and you ain't really about this game. Please believe I mean, me. you, you, if you want to have girlfriends, I guess you can, but why have girlfriends when you can have a gang of hoes and become a real motherfucking man? I ain't saying you got to be a pimp to be a man. We ain't saying that, but yeah. we just happen to be. We just happen. We telling our story. Yeah. That's what God did with us. That's what we came up out of. So another hey, nigga hey, might have hey. came from somewhere else. And, and, and we wasn't supposed to be doing it. We would have had all kinds of problems with it. You feel me? My whole thing is, look, man, listen, my dad told me a story. I forget the golfer's name back in the day. He said the golfer ended up getting ill and he couldn't play golf anymore, right? That he even had to be in a wheelchair, you know? And they said, uh, you know, they was, he was having an interview with him. And they was like, man, you was one of the greatest golfers. Oh, now you in a wheelchair, man. Are you... I mean, they were so worried about him. And the golfer said, I got to play the ball where the ball land. <laughs> <laughs> see, 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 powerful shit like that. You feel That's me? Over motherfuckers head, man. Come on, man. I, I, I did a video today, man, and I said, and I'm going to say it again, that I am so fucking happy to be kicking it with you. Because finally, all the other hosts I was with, I had to subdue myself because they couldn't stand the truth. And, and, and when they heard it, they would say some little bullshit behind it. You hear the shit and don't do nothing but cap with it because yeah. it don't threaten you. It, it, it's, it's, it's like showing what we really are, what we, what we can do, how we think. You know where we coming from, because none of this shit is scripted at all. None of it, all organic, because it's real. Yeah, all organic. And 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 on that note, on that note right there, I don't. And not that Ru but but is saying that I that I am. But I'm gonna just say this: I don't feel like I'm doing anything extraordinary. But because of where I come from, that's just who I am. Bud is doing a phenomenal job for our people. And and how what would it look like a nigga that is the the authentic like myself not want to support that? That's some crazy ass shit. And any person that he was messing with that wouldn't support it, he ain't this. How could I not want to support the work if it's benefiting our people? That's crazy. Man. Bud's a motherfucker. He done come through. He done been through, right? And now he's giving you what he done come through and been through. Now he is who he is. 
and he'd been there for a long time. But for God to give him the opportunity to share, these is giants, these, these is elders. My dad said at my dad's funeral, somebody said an uh, African proverb. They said about my dad, when an elder dies, a library is burnt. But the, a library was, I understood the concept because my dad put it in me. That's why I'm putting it in you. See, this is an elder speaking to us, bud. You don't want him to die without conveying the information and the knowledge that he's been able to go through in his life to share with us, all of us. Say it right? again, goddamn it. You That's don't want real. that. It's elders, man. That's I got real. an admiration for the elders, man. These men done paved the way, done made it, and God still allowed them to be living to give. I'm living to give. That's what we do at this point. You better take advantage of it, man. Hey, hey, hey Dre, Dre, wrong, Dre, wrong. Dre, psychologists call it the generativity phase of life. Yeah. Most, most dudes, uh, most people that, that, you know, lived illegally, when they get older, they, they, they really start looking back at their life. They don't regret it. They just want to give a show appreciation. And right. they start sharing their knowledge. You yeah, know, they, they willingly share it, and that's yeah. what we do. I want you guys to get a book, man, uh, called "The Greatest Salesman in the World." It's by Og Bandino. You guys get that because it's kind of referencing what Bud and I is talking about right now, right? It's powerful. But go, 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 go! Put something in you, man. See, at a young age, my dad would challenge me. He said, "Son, you know everything there is to know about this slick part of life." You ain't got to keep learning that. You got that. He said, I want you to go learn how them white folks is operating because it's the squares that's running the world. So I want you to learn that. I want you to go read. I want you to go read the books. I want you to master them and learn them. Because once you learn them and you have what you have, you'll be unstoppable. They can't stop you. But you got to go learn them, master them, because you already got this game master, this street master. So go invest in something else and get your mind sharper. And son, you'll be unstoppable. And that's what I did. That's what I did. That's why I can sit among senators and speak their language convincingly enough to have them trust me, enough to have them submit and follow my leadership. Because my father taught me not to be a one trick pony, to be vast. So I'm vast in many areas. That's called a renaissance man. He has mm -hmm. a lot. He has information in many different areas. Renaissance man. And that's what my dad educated me at a young age. So I had such a head start because when I was a young fella, eight, nine, ten, starting then devouring the information, getting this game, getting this information. Because my dad wasn't saying, I want you to be a pimp. Never one time did he say it to me. As a matter of fact, he wanted me to become a criminal attorney. Right. But he led me in a direction and he said, I'm giving you this. I'm teaching you this. And he, he, he would impress upon me there's nothing more important than manhood. That's the most important thing, and don't violate it. And anytime I violated, he would check me on it. And it was like death to me when he said, you ain't being no man. That was the worst thing in the goddamn yeah, that world. That was the worst thing you could hear, huh? Worst thing in the goddamn world. And I'm a shorty, 8, 9, and 10, growing up with that. So when you see me now, understand I got decades in this. Decades in this. Build it up decades that's why you could see me in front of them white folks and not be moved and be the one doing the moving being the one controlling because of the poise because of what i learned from my father at a young age now you out there that don't have a father you got rosebud you got me right here right now take advantage of it get into the goddamn class show that you value information you waiting for the new rap tape. The program. Get with you it. Waiting to you hear the new mixtape. You waiting for entertainment. Invest in your information. A new book come out. White folks is around the corner. Waiting for the new book of knowledge. A new mixtape come out. Black people are around the corner. Waiting to be entertained. Get into class. <laughs> Get in the motherfucking class. Come on, bud. Tell <laughs> <laughs> Dre, you see, you got me all quiet over here, man. <laughs> hey, I, I can't, I can't interrupt you because you're spitting so much truth. Hey, man, bud, listen, man, we here for them to get this information. Give it to them one more time, bud. How to get in touch with you, man? Hey, man, you guys, 
askrosebud at gmail.com. That's my e that's my email. Rosebud the author dot com is my site. July 1st is a new semester. I got plenty room. S show me you really want this. Hit Get me in up. the class. Hit me up. Go to PayPal. Sign up. In 90 days from now, you and Dre going to be kicking it like me and Dre kick it all the time. Ain't because no you're going to have some game. Please believe. My class is right here on YouTube. Mondays and Fridays. We do YouTube Live classes Monday and Friday at 7 o'clock. They are fire. I got remnant members right in the chat right now. Yes. Get in class. Bud and I is here. You got no excuse, especially now that you didn't heard it. No excuse. Get in the class, man. Value so, hey, information. Hey, get, in, get in the remnant class and learn from Dre how to be cool, calm, and collected, but at the same time, gaining some principles. Gaining some boundaries, gaining some shit that you can stand on, little victories that you can use as a foundation, a basis for you to believe in. At least that's that's what I believe. Yeah. And that's Sidewalk University. Matter of fact, we need to have some confirmations on here. I'm about to put the link up in the uh up in the chat, man. Here the link. Come on, mess with me and Bud right now. Come up in here. <laughs> 200, get in on the link, man. Let them, let, them, let them know what's going on in class. And all you sidewalk university, get up in here and let them know what's happening. You know it. God you damn it. We are not playing around here. Our people's in desperate need. In desperate need, and we're here to give it to you. And in yes, remnants, you're going to get the finer details that we don't get into when we talk on like we generally speaking sidewalk university same way there's there's many different aspects of one topic mm -hmm. the topic could be conversation or, or women but there's so many aspects of it we could have 300 shows on it wow uh the the link is in the chat jump on here man Jump on here and break bread with being Bud. Hey, chill lock. Uh, SWU is not one on one, but you can have one on one. SWU is a school and it's a class of dudes that I teach Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at six o'clock. Mike, Mike West, and I taught him. What's up? What's up? What's up, y'all? I'm trying to. Can y'all hear me? We yeah, can hear you great. I, I can hear y'all. I don't think y'all can see me though. Uh, yes, man, we, I'm, we can see you. We can see you. Okay, I, okay. I can't. I just can't see y'all. But it's but it's cool, man. Look, man. I'm a real. I'm gonna be as quick as possible with this, man. I transferred to a, a, a Lutheran school in 2003, right? Mm -hmm. And it was me and about three other brothers, and maybe a few few more of our other friends we hung with. And lo and behold. I'm, I'm getting introduced to this documentary called American Pimp, right? And so, you know, me and me and my friends, we would, you know, you know, imitate some of you guys and this, that, and all this, right? But I bring it up to say that was 2003 when I was first introduced to the to the uh, documentary. Then when I transferred to, oh, now, now I see, now, now see y'all. Then I transferred. Um, where I would finish undergrad at in 08, and I would I was really going heavy watching it on 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 YouTube. But anyway, like I said, my point that I want to make is, in uh, being 19 and then 24, 25 years old, I'm 39 now. I never thought in a million freaking years that I would be as close as I was to you all. And we and we like I got Dre changing my whole I mean really influencing me toward the Bible man I ain't no Bible person because I don't mess with church right but what he what he teach bud and and, and everybody else who want to know about the, the the remnant classes is that the Bible is our African people's culture as opposed to Christianity man that is man. a game changer because once you once you take out once you take out religion, to me and, and just and just really 
really see it as 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 game, it man, it it opens up. It, it I'm telling you, it opens up so much, man. Because I I just like I said, man. I just I just never thought me being just some guy, some guy who who imitated you guys and who fantasized about the life would even would even experience this, man. And just yeah. to just to be able to have this reinforcement, man, it's it's so look back in few a few years back, I got the confidence courses. Yeah. Shit, heck, man. And so it, it's just man, this 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 is this is priceless, man. Cause what I feel, I always felt for a long time that the so-called, well, I being with Dre now, I don't consider myself no L7. I'm I'm the remnant. No so when the remnant so when the remnant so when the remnant can can link up with the with the with the street cats white supremacy ain't got a fucking chance you don't they don't have a fucking excuse my language but they don't have a fucking chance cuz i i admit i admit i at, with with me i can i can use the i can use the edge that the street cats bring i can use it and I feel like they could use the they could use the 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 I don't know maybe the 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 finesse or just the um the 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 diplomatic uh I would yeah I would say more diplomatic side that that us you know remnant cats bring because we ain't we ain't naturally we ain't street cats but we ain't punks either right. so each each one of us could could learn from each other and we could crush that we can crush that 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 thing they call Willie Lynch to 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 hell. Yes, sir. So yes, I just want to, I just want to, I just want to thank you all, man. Because, man, I'm the, I'm the remnant to listening to some of these stories in the game, man. And I'm, I'm ready to soak that up. I'm ready yeah. to soak that up and get go out and use that the first thing tomorrow. But uh, I let somebody else get on, and I want to just thank the both of y'all, man. Love Appreciate it. Appreciate you, Mike. Love. Now that's a testimony. Somebody that's been in both of our class and been in both. On. That's powerful, bro. That's powerful. Hey, they've been in both. And, 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 and you see how you see he mentioned that uh, yeah. philosophy you have and how how it worked for him and, and all of whatever and, he and got then from turned right back around and said, mm -hmm. I'm about to go use it right now. And he got that from you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You didn't learn nothing if you can't use it right now. Ain't no question about it, man. That's lovely. All That's right. Come on, like y'all it with me and Bud, man. What is happening? Okay, here we go. Chico Brown, I can't see you. We can't see you. You got to turn your camera on. You got to turn your mic on. Unmute yourself. Okay, you come back in. When you get ready. When you, when you got it. Okay, hold on. We getting ready. Okay, you still ain't got no feed right there. No video feed. I, you ain't got no video feed. You got to turn your cameras on. It's on your end, loved one. Try to get it right. Come back in. Who else want to come on and kick it with me and Bud before we up out of here, man? Get you some of this game. Ask a personal question. Come get it, baby. Hey, hey, the best way to get the game is to motherfucking put it on you. So come on. Let's, let's see what question you got and see yeah. if you can understand the answer. Yeah. We got them. <laughs> All of them. We got them, baby. Between All them. the fucking answers. Okay, here we go. Hold on. Oh, I know this guy. <laughs> yeah, what's this up, the guy. What's up, what's, up, what's up, man? What's happening? What's up, bud? Yeah, I was on the stream last week. I don't know if you remember me. I remember you asking me about the religious question. Yeah, 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 yeah. Honestly, I'm scared to call in because Bud offered me SWU. I bought his course. I'm scared to say some stupid shit. He might flip out. Hey, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. Okay, we, okay. You, okay. Don't um, you can't don't 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 think of correction as flipping out. You think of correction yeah, yeah. as love. Correction is love, man. That's what okay. that is. Dre, I'm trying to uh, wrap my head around something. You was an American pimp, right? Yeah. But, okay, but Bud is seven years old. I'm trying to figure out, like, how old are you? Because American pimp was in 98, and you don't look like. 
Hey, this game preserve a motherfucker, brother. <laughs> hey, Drake, I, m- I might have 10 years on Drake. <laughs> Oh really? Wow! You don't look nothing that day. No, it's yeah, just game preserving him. <laughs> and I yeah, started yeah. real young too, man. <laughs> I, I used to yeah, tell yeah. my son, I used to tell my son, I said, "Boy, you better be careful because they're gonna be thinking I'm your little brother in a minute." <laughs> 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 yeah, but but you gotta understand that you know I haven't eaten meat in twenty years. I've been a, a, a vegetarian, vegan at first. I eat organic foods. I watch what I put in my body, and that probably has a lot to do with it. And often, this game will preserve you. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, and I just want to say, son, Bud gave me a whole different uh, perspective about pimps because originally, like, I just knew uh, what I knew about pimps, like, from the media. Somebody that has money, that he probably pays women to be with him. Because I'm originally from Jersey City, but now I live in Egypt. My family's Egyptian. But yeah. to be honest, you know, I was in the streets too, but I really never met a pimp. I think I had one pimp around the way. But, you know, when I listened to Bud, it gave me a whole different perspective. It was nothing like the media portrayed a pimp to, like, you know. So all these people in this chat that's, like, putting down pimps is crazy. They don't even know anything about it. You know, well, so I just want, I'm not I want to make more. I'm not a I know. anymore. You know what I'm saying? But I know. we were. You know hey, what I'm hey, saying? Hey, we just left the game. The game didn't leave us. Right. We still got <laughs> this game. We can't help it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I got a whole different perspective. And, um, and the pimp is about principles, about, like Buzz says, about being a man first. You're a man uh-huh. before anything. Yeah, so right. yeah, I just want, yeah, I just want to highlight you, uh, you and Bud, and Bud, I'll see you uh, in the end of June uh, in SWU. Get that's me, a, man, so you that's can get me in July. Love. Yeah, that's you know it. Chill, Wizzle. What's up, that's him. Chill, hey. Will. What's up? How y'all doing tonight? Shout out to everybody. In the, in the Shout out, love one. Nothing, man. I just came to bring some receipts to the table. Uh, and to let everybody know that, uh, oh man, I gotta go, level. Give me one. Okay. Second. All right. Yeah, at work. Hey, when they at work, man, what can you do? No. Hey, What's Devin. Going on? What's up, bros, bro? Hey, I know Devin. What's happening? Hey, so I just wanted to call in and say that one of the biggest things I've learned so far from being in Sidewalk University is that the truth about being a man and knowing who you are is the most important truth before you go out and find out all the other truths in the world. Mm. So it's really helped me. Like, I can't even begin to explain. Hey, let me, I can't let wait me, to... Hey, Dre, Dre, let me oh. tell you something about this dude. I had no idea this motherfucker is as sharp as he is. Yeah. I mean, he, he just don't have that look. Right, right. Able, he don't have that look to be able to grab some street shit. Wow. But this <laughs> thing, I'm talking about, I would say this or that, blah, blah, blah. And later on that night or the next morning, he would hit me with some sort of email telling me how the shit really works, how he went right out and try. This is the hardest working motherfucker in my class. Hey, man, Devin. And I got some homework to catch up on, and I'm so excited. Hey, to hear bro, it. <laughs> just do your thing, because I told you, as long as you sound good on those recordings, you getting what we're talking about. Hey, Devin, thank you for awesome. your testimony, man. Chill, Will, That's what's right. up? Hey, guys. Thanks. Have thank a good you, one. man. Appreciate that testimonial. Hey, yo, bro. Because he, he, had, he had the job. Uh, who's this? Chico Brown. We don't see you, man. I heard him. Yeah. We hear you, but we don't uh, see you. Take hold the camera on. Put the camera on. Let me see what's in there. Here you there go. You go. Here you go. Yeah, there yeah, you go. What's up, man? What's up? What's up? Yeah. Uh, who was that fool? You said there's 10 steps ahead of you. Joe Cato. Damn. That sounds like Mike Tyson. Or like you know, it rhymes. 
He, he he was the Mike Tyson of this goddamn game. <laughs> one of the, no, he wasn't the Mike Tyson. He was one of the Mike Tysons. Yeah. Why do you uh? What what was one of his biggest like? What is he uh best known for? As in like his biggest reward or action? Man, I, I I didn't you know follow that nigga like that man. I no, just not like that, but you I know just see what he did like, whatever's been heard. Man. Motherfucker. Like no, nah, nah, no, never mind. He had two of everything. Damn. Two houses, two Rolls Royces, two motherfucking Seville's, two goddamn <laughs> El Dorados, you know, <laughs> 200 hoes. He's a legend in this game, man. Very, That's very how we see the nigga. He pimped he's a legend. good. He was good. Trust me. Damn. Hey, listen to this. And when the nigga uh, was ready to die, he had cancer. He was in the hospital. And we went to see the nigga. And, and, and while we was there, uh, they came to give him the news that he just wasn't going to get any better. You know what that nigga did? Dre. Uh. Joe Cato told them people to check him out. Because somebody need this bed. Wow. Damn. He said, I'm going to go home and be in hospice. Yes. Joe Cato said that, man. Wow. Wow. That's big, man. That's huge, man. That's <laughs> huge. Okay, loved one. Chico, all love. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Right. Dr. Dankenstein, what's up, Woody? We can't hear you. What's going on? You hear me? What's happening with it? What about now? Y'all hear yeah, me? Yeah, we hear you now. Yeah. All right. Hey man, I'm just I'm just here, man. I be seeing all these people the week after week. Talk about they done been to your class, they've been to Buzz class. But hey man, man, I'm here to represent mm -hmm. for Tay, man. I got all the pieces, the whole whole life. And and uh hey, gotta, fucking hey, way because you keep, you keep going in and out. You You're gonna represent for Tay, we need to hear you clearly. Your thing done froze. Yeah, come on, come back in and represent for Jay, man. When your when your stuff is right, your stuff done froze. Yeah, represent right if you're gonna represent for Tay, man. We're trying to hear everything clearly. <laughs> Dre, you know what though? I, right. I, got, I actually got a hot one tonight, man. What? The date, man. What? Okay, you gotta go then. I see. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm supposed to pick baby up at ten. Oh yeah, well, you better get ready, man. You so, know what I'm saying? So, hey, hey, man, and she 55. Yeah, uh, right. Your speed, right there, man. Hey, that's my speed, man. I ain't fucking <laughs> with no more thirties. Right, right. Hey, Dre, that's who I was fucking with, just in thirty year old. Cause you yeah. know, them bitches let a nigga go on and hit that pussy and shit. But they be wanting something too much, man. <laughs> so I ain't got nothing to give you but some dick. <laughs> 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 hey, 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 them 55s, them motherfuckers, you, you bring them in the house, they walk in the door first, and I got steps. So they look right to the to the left and start going up the steps. They, wow. don't, even, they don't even go in the living room. Wow, wow. <laughs> They season. They know what's up. They know what's up, man. But yeah. look, every Tuesday, you guys, I'm going to be here. We'll be here. I, we'll be I here. I fucking love kicking it with this nigga here. We're going to be here. Hey, Let's hey, go. hey. And you see, even I know how to shut up. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Dre, but I love you, man. I love you, too, man. You had me on quiet all night, damn near, man. Never that. Hey, <laughs> respect, baby. Love, man. Have a great day tonight. You know it. Be cool. Okay, one.